Ladies and gentlemen, politics is a very interesting game. And politics is also a very dirty game. And personally, that's why I love politics. On Thursday, senators voted overwhelmingly to impeach Kisi Deputy Governor Dr. Richard Monda. The truth of the matter is that if William Ruto wanted to save Dr. Richard Monda from the impeachment, he would have done that. But William Ruto did not intervene. And the question which most Kenyans are asking is what message was he trying to send to his allies from Kisi? Because let's face it, in July last year, Governor, Deputy Governor for CIA, William Oduol, was faced with a similar situation. But Kenya Kwanza senators did not even waste time debating. For them, they only waited for the vote. And indeed, they saved William Oduol. The truth is, if Kenya Kwanza wanted to save Dr. Richard Monda, they would have done that. But it was clear from the onset, from the statement on the floor of the house by the minority whip, Boni Halwale. Then followed by the senator for Nandi, Gerard Gay. It is new to the extent that he has raised four things upon which you should rule. Mr. Speaker, I'm inviting you again to consider ruling on a fifth thing, namely that whereas this is the Senate, but in this chamber this morning and for the next two days, Mr. Speaker, we have converted ourselves into a trial chamber. And therefore, Mr. Speaker, any member of parliament seated in this chamber is seated here as a judge to what's going on. Mr. Speaker, the invitation I'm asking you to make is that if you allow the Honorable Soro to then sit in this house and do something other than what a member of parliament is supposed to do in a trial chamber. Is it not, Mr. Speaker, that amount to having a sitting of the High Court, for example, where a judge who would have sat on that matter then jumps and becomes an advocate in the same court, Mr. Speaker? And, Mr. Speaker, because we are now going to be setting a precedent we request you to consider this issue long and hard because we have some very eminent lawyers in the National Assembly and this Parliament who will then start abusing this to the extent that it will be the disadvantage to the impeachment process. I thank you. To me, and this will be my conclusion, that uh, the governor of uh, Kisi, Bishmua Simbarati, and Honorable Silvana Sosoro, I've had a public altercation. Mr. Speaker, I beg that we should not use Senate as a playground of local politics of what is happening in Kisi, Mr. Speaker. Could it be Senator Osoro, uh, uh, Honorable Osoro, and Simba Governor Arati extending their playful political ground to the Republic of Senate, Mr. Speaker, where we are here only to listen to charges that have the basis of evidence and can stand the test of legal and constitutional and standing orders, Mr. Speaker. So I beg that you rule that Honorable Soro should uh, relinquish himself from representing Honorable Monda, go back to his house business in the National Assembly, and serve our party the UDA and Kenya Kwanza majority national is a chief whip. We might lose some of the bills at the National Assembly, while Mweshimea Osoro is busy representing for personal, financial, gainful, and propelling his professional at the expense of the position that we gave him in the National Assembly, Mr. Speaker. So I beg your ruling, and Senator Osoro should go back to serve the people of South Megrango and members of National Assembly, Mr. Speaker and allow this house to proceed. And I know Senior Counsel Katwa Keegan and the other retinue of colleague Lanned can do their job well, Mr. Speaker. So I, I request that on PO, let's uh, let Mwishmua Soro. There is no problem. They can still continue fighting with Governor Rati in funerals in Kisi, but not in this house. I submit, Mr. Speaker, sir. I don't want to go into the details of that impeachment process because it was live on TV 
and I believe that most of you guys took their time and watched it. But let me just take you how they voted. 39 senators voted to send Richard Monda home. 39 senators. That's a huge number. And that's a huge statement. On the gross misconduct, 35 senators voted to send him home. On gross violation of the constitution, 39. Abuse of office also. So in short, the senators voted overwhelmingly to impeach the deputy governor. And that's a huge blow for none other than the majority whip in the National Assembly, Silvanus Osoro. Because Silvanus Osoro and the group were actually just thumping in Kisi how they would save Monda and that Monda would not be sent home as long as they are alive. The truth of the matter is that in the next 14 days, Simbarati is going to name a new deputy. And the truth is, Monda has only one option left, seeking for redress in court. We know so well that the courts might work in his favor or not. We saw Ambora surviving court process. The former Wajia governor survived the court process. Songo and Waititu never succeeded. So in this video, I want to reveal to you guys the message which William Bruto wanted to send to his allies from Kisi, led by Silvanus Osoro. But before we do that, for those who are watching this channel for the first time, please take a second or two, click that subscribe button so that next time we produce a video like this, YouTube will automatically notify you. And to the subscribers, I want to continue thanking you guys for your continued support because without that support, this channel cannot be waited. Ladies and gentlemen, without any further ado, allow me to dive in. What message do you think William Ruto was trying to send to Silvanus Osoro and the team? Because remember, the trouble with Richard Monda actually began when he hosted Osoro, the senator for Kisi, Richard Onyonka, the women rep, and several other MCS from Kisi. And the message from that meeting was that there is no way, as long as they were alive, Monda was going to be impeached. And that gave Monda the right to just stamp. Indeed, initially there were attempts to also impeach Simba Arati. So initially what they wanted to do, they wanted to impeach Simba Arati so that Monda could take over. And that's normally very common with most deputy governors. And in fact, the main reason why the governors and their deputies always disagree is because the deputy governors always feel that, that they're never given enough work and that, that there's always an opportunity for them to become the governor through an impeachment. And because Kenya Kwanza is in power and Osoro is powerful in quotes, he believed that there was no way William Ruto was going Dump him. Remember, they were also enjoying the support of the Cabinet Secretary for Education, El Ezekiel Mochogo. But what message do you think William Ruto was trying to send to them? Because that's the most important thing. Number one, I think the element of the handshake between Raila Odinga and William Ruto can be seen in this whole impeachment process. That can explain why William Ruto did not really go full throttle in trying to save the deputy governor, in my view. The truth is, there's a handshake between Ruto and Raila. You never know. Maybe Ruto and Raila agreed that for the sake of peace, let us not involve ourselves on the Kisi issue. Because I remember at some point when the day Aisha Jumwa was with Raila Dinga in Capitol Hill, Simba Rati was also in Capitol Hill. So in my view, I strongly believe that what you witnessed there is kind of the hand of the handshake. And therefore, anybody who is serious, anybody who is serious, politically speaking, especially those from Kenya Kwanza, they should start reading the signs on the wall. That's number one. Number two, I also tend to think that William Ruto is still keen on working with the Simba Arati. That is a fact. In fact, Immediately, William Ruto was elected and sworn in as the president of the Republic of Kenya. He embarked on a journey of working with four ODM governors. Busia governor, Polo Tuma, Kisi governor, Simba Arati, Kakamega governor, Fernando Baraza, and Mombasa governor, Abdul Swamad Nasser. 
I don't know what happened along the way, but William Ruto almost won the support of those governors. For Simba Arati, probably the fallout between Ruto re-emerged as a result of Osoro, because Osoro is also eyeing the same seat. But William Ruto, in my view, is still keen on working with Arati. Because this, this story that Relu Dinga might not be on the ballot, and in case Relu Dinga will not be on the ballot, William Ruto would need people he can work with from the ODM side. He almost worked with Simba Arati. So maybe that's the reason why Ruto did not really involve himself on this particular matter. So that at the end of the day, Arati will know that Ruto did not really intervene on this matter. And therefore, I survived. So Ruto is still keen on working with the Simba Arati. Number three is about the question about the value of William Ruto's allies from uh, the Gusi region. You are the minority whip. You are the alleged kingpin of Kisi. You have the support of the former governor. You have the support of the cabinet secretary. You have the support of the senator. You have the support of the women rep. But you can't convince your own senators. So it boils down to the questions about the value. The value of William Ruto's allies. So I think William Ruto being a shrewd politician wanted to test these guys. And he has realized that probably they don't have any value they are adding. If you were to give William Ruto an opportunity to take a rati, to work with a rati or a sorrow, I think William Ruto would not have a second thought. That's probably what happened to these guys. And the, the sooner they realized that, the better for them. Number four, they also failed, in my view, because William Ruto also wanted to test their ability. You brag, you just thump. Now he has the opportunity. It has presented itself. I want to see how far you can go. Then you guys, instead of moving around, using your proximity to power, instead of doing that, what do you do? You keep on coming to my office. I am told there was even a meeting attended by William Ruto when these guys went to see William Ruto. William Ruto never committed to them. So, in short, they don't have any capacity and ability to fight any political war. If you look at the number of senators in the National Assembly, Kenya Kwanza has the highest number. And of course now they had the support of the Kisi senator. So that would mean they had massive support. But 39 versus 8. That is massive. Massive. That's massive. So they don't have any capacity. And lastly, and this is also something which contributed to William Ruto's failure to support them. They were just thumping everywhere, swearing everywhere, in funerals, how that impeachment will not succeed as long as they are alive. So William Ruto was also watching them that, okay, why do you just thump? The implication of just thumping was that if senators were to impeach the were to fail to impeach the deputy governor, it would have been interpreted that it is Ruto. So William Ruto didn't want that to happen because it, it was going to have a negative image of him. And of course, clearly, Monda also made a mistake. How can a whole governor demand a bribe of 800,000 from a youth in the name of offering a job? How? Why? And then he went further and procured the services of the father to deny the son. At the end of the day, the biggest winner in this is Simba Arati. Silva Nuso Soro should continue crying in the toilet. And he must now review his politics moving forward. I don't know what you think. That's my take. Until next time, this is Lee McQueen. Bye-bye.